So my name is Tyrone Porter, and I'm a professor in biomedical engineering here at UT Austin. So I knew I wanted to become an engineer uh, when I was elementary or middle school. And there are a few things that happened or technology that was being introduced into the Republic sphere that was really fascinating. Um, probably the one that had the biggest impact was computers in the home. So desktop computers, I'm kind of aging myself now because we have cell phones that are even more powerful than computers were back at that point in time. But the Apple computer with the, the mouse and the user interfa interface that was really, really accessible. Um, and I think really sort of made it user friendly to actually work on a computer. It was not so intimidating. Many people were beginning to buy computers. I also was big into video games. And so just the hardware and the software and the programming that went into that just was kind of captivating to me. And so I just knew then that I really wanted to, to be an engineer, um, be a problem solver, but also somebody who designed new things, new fascinating things that made life easier, improved quality of life, but also allowed us to do you know, amazing things that we couldn't do before. So I chose biomedical engineering after getting captivated with computers because I wanted to do things that actually would help people. Um, I think computers definitely makes life maybe a little easier. You can do a lot of um, the typing. You can finish homework assignments. You can you know, keep track of your budget, your finances. But I wanted to work on things that would keep help people live longer, but also not suffer so much. So uh, if you have cancer or if you have heart disease or if you've got a limb that needs to be replaced, like an artificial hip, you know, engineers actually play a big, big role in and, and the technology that then is used in order to improve quality of life or treat certain diseases. So my favorite thing about being a biomedical engineer is the diversity of things that I'm able to work on, the different types of problems, the different medical conditions that I can work on. I had a family friend that passed away from cancer and it was traumatizing to me and my family um, to lose a friend like that, to just sort of see them slowly pass away. Um, was really traumatizing. So I really, I've, I've dedicated a lot of my time, and energy, uh, intellect, creativity to improving upon how we treat cancer. Um, so that's probably the best part. The thing I really love about being a biomedical engineer is the different types of medical conditions. We've gone on from just working on cancer to, you know, giving thought to um, brain diseases, whether it's Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, I know there are a lot of people who are also dealing with trauma and losing family members or watching their family members begin to lose their memory, really difficulty in engaging and interacting with the family members. It's just the quality of life just really sort of falls over a cliff. Um, and so just, you know, coming up with creative solutions for either treating really, really difficult, challenging diseases or also um, diagnosing. How, you, how do you actually detect these disease, uh, diseases? something that really excites me every day. So to become a biomedical engineer, it was a non-traditional path for me because um, I originally wanted to be an electrical engineer. I wanted to work on computer technology. Um, and so I hadn't really taken a lot of biology courses. If you're gonna be a biomedical engineer, you really wanna know how the human body works uh, at sort of the, the whole body level, but also specific organs. You might wanna really understand how organs work and how they work cooperatively with other parts of the body, whether it's the heart working with the lungs or the stomach working with the small intestines. You really wanna know how the body functions as a sort of, almost like a system, right? Within your home or within a building. And so I had to take a lot of biology courses, whether it was anatomy, or physiology, um, or microbiology. Uh, molecular biology, I really had to take biology courses in addition to math courses, phys physical sciences like physics, uh, structures. I really had to take courses in a broad spectrum of things, um, uh, signals and systems. Uh, and so that was the basis for in terms of my education for becoming a biomedical engineer. But at the same time, it was it was enthralling because I wasn't only learning about one particular area of study or discipline. So I was learning from mathematicians, 
I was learning from biologists. I was learning from clinicians. I was learning from computer programmers. And so I was, I was, I looked at myself as being a library and a warehouse of just a lot of information that um, I was, I had to figure out how to take advantage of the different pieces of information in order to come up with really fascinating, effective solutions for different types of medical conditions. And I still learn to this day. That's one of the other things I love about, about my job. I'm constantly learning. So a day in a life after waking up super early in the morning to get the kids off to school, um, a typical day for me is spending a lot of time actually using my brain. I think a lot. Uh, I contemplate a lot. Um, I read a lot. Um, and I used to not be a huge fan of reading. Um, but I've actually become, uh, um, begin to really love sitting and reading different uh, types of science, different areas of science. So I read a lot. I talk with my graduate students a lot. Um, I teach. So I can't, that's a very important part of my job. Um, I do go into the classroom and lecture uh, to the students. I try to actually, I have a, what I would like to call a conversation style. So I really try to get the students to talk about what they're learning, what they're reading in, in, in the textbooks or what we're covering in class in terms of example problems. I, I really want the students to really sort of really participate in their own education, in their own learning. My day is, to be honest, is having conversations around science. And, you know, that brings about new ideas, new innovations, new technologies, um, because, you know, we, so, some of these problems are so complex. We can't solve them um, by ourselves. We can't work independently and work alone in the office space. I work with a lot of different people and that requires a lot of just a lot of communication and a lot of conversation. So a day of my life is, you know, for the most part, most of my day is actually spending reading, thinking and talking with different people about different problems and different solutions. One of the things that has become a priority and really a focus, a focal spot uh, for my lab and the research that we do is um, brain diseases. And in particular, uh, circumventing or overcoming the blood brain barrier. So it protects the brain from certain types of diseases, uh, medical conditions, um, but it also keeps therapeutic agents out. So if you, if, you, if you had Parkinson's disease, if you had brain cancer, if you had Alzheimer's disease or dementia, uh, we've heard about um, some of these professional football players having um, you know, chronic brain uh, progressive diseases from you know, multiple blows to the head. How do you treat that? You, know, you, you normally would administer a drug of some sort, a drug cocktail that would be able to treat that in other organs within the body. But because the brain is so heavily fortified and protected with the blood-brain barrier, most of these drugs, regardless of how effective they are, they can't get access to the brain cells, that they can't get access to the brain tissue. They can't treat and cure the, the, the patient, the suffering. So my group is really as a focal, uh, a focus for what we're doing in the, in the lab. Spend a lot of time thinking about ways to actually bypass uh, in a controlled, predictable manner so that not any and everything gets into the brain, but selectively drugs that could actually treat certain diseases gains access into the brain. And that's something that um, we spend a lot of time thinking about and it's actually extremely exciting because it requires a lot of uh, cooperation and collaboration from people who are neuroscientists, who are neurosurgeons, uh, material scientists, pharmacologists, and biomedical engineers, all working collectively for a very, very sophisticated problem um, that a lot of people are suffering from nowadays. It's just brain diseases that seem to be untreatable. Uh, I will say I fail more than I succeed. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't appreciate or understand, um, is that when you're trying something possibly for the first time, or you're trying to solve a really, really complex or difficult problem, there's usually more failure than success. But one of the things that actually also brought me into engineering was space travel. There was a space race that occurred many decades ago, and I've actually watched the sort of the story behind NASA's successes, but the rockets initially were huge failures. I mean, there were more explosions than they probably care to talk about on the launch pads before they actually had success. 
So I have, we have similar um, amounts or levels of failure within the laboratory where we're trying out a new drug, um, nanoparticle formulation, we're trying out a new strategy or approach for imaging and improving the quality of an image, uh, the sort of resolution within the image, and we might try a new processing technique on the computer just to, to make the image actually look better. And so doctors can pick out abnormalities a lot easier. That usually starts with a lot of failure um, initially. And, and over time, with patience and learning from the failures, I mean, actually, I have to be honest, I tell this to my son on a regular basis, you, you're, not, you're not learning unless you're failing. You're not trying unless you're failing. So, you know, it's an important part of life it's an important part of success, to be honest, is to actually go through some failure. Um, so I, I fail on a regular basis. I do.